So what I want to do here is have a discussion about the Avengers. And what I'm hoping is that at the end of this video, you'll have a strong understanding of their history, as well as how their roster and continuity have changed over the years. Created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby in 1963, the Avengers were introduced as an answer to DC's Justice League of America. In the 1974 book Origins of Marvel Comics by Stan Lee, he had stated that during a conversation with Marvel's president Martin Goodman, the idea came to introduce Marvel's own variation of a team that could offer competition and ensure that they didn't fall behind in sales. Because the Justice League found a success by bringing together some of DC's top heroes at the time, the decision was made to do the same using Marvel's top characters. To this end, in 1963, under Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, Marvel brought together Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, Hank Pym, and Janet Van Dyne to launch the team. During this story, the villain Loki sought revenge due to having previously been defeated by Thor. Using his magic to leave his physical body and ascend to Earth, Loki targeted the Incredible Hulk, and after forcing him to see a bundle of TNT on a set of railroad tracks, the Hulk intervenes in order to save the train. Demolishing the tracks but repairing them in the process, the conductor and his assistant believed that the Hulk had destroyed the tracks for the purpose of destroying the train. Following this, newspapers began reporting on the Hulk's actions and in the process, Rick Jones, the boy Bruce Banner had saved during the Gamma Bomb experiment that made him the Hulk, sends a message to the Fantastic Four reporting that the Hulk needs to be found before humanity takes action. Intervening the broadcast and directing it to Thor, the signal is also overheard by both Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne as well as Tony Stark. With Ant-Man, Wasp, Thor, and Iron Man responding to the call, the group assembles at the home of Rick Jones in order to put their resources together to locate Banner. During their conversation, Loki uses his powers to cast an illusion, causing Thor to believe that the Hulk is traveling past their residence. Chasing after him, Thor uses his hammer to incapacitate the Hulk, but realizes that the Hulk isn't truly there. Coming to the conclusion that this is the result of Loki's magic, Thor leaves for Asgard in order to inform Odin of Loki's actions. Transitioning to the Hulk himself, due to his desire to remain hidden from humanity in addition to the knowledge that the world believes that he had intended to destroy the train, the Hulk takes up residence with a traveling circus. Masquerading as a robot, the Hulk is able to use his extreme strength to put on a show for the circus onlookers, with no one aware of who he is. With the aid of his ability to communicate with ants, Hank Pym is informed of where the Hulk is located, and after having the ants dig a massive hole beneath him, the Hulk falls into the ground which traps him. With Iron Man, Wasp, and Hank Pym moving in, the Hulk begins to go on a rampage, attacking all of them in turn. Because Iron Man's armor allows for incredible strength, albeit with limited maneuverability, the two begin to battle one another. However, when the Hulk damages the battery within the Iron Man armor, the Hulk is then able to make his escape. Transitioning back to Thor, his meeting with Odin reveals that while he is granted access to the Island of Silence where Loki is imprisoned, because they're both his sons, Odin refuses to take part in the conflict between the two. Traveling to the island itself, the conflict between the two reveals Loki using various magics and tricks against Thor in an effort to defeat him. However, because he's able to use his hammer to attack each of these abilities in turn, Thor is able to overcome Loki and takes him prisoner. Transitioning back to the battle between Iron Man and the Hulk, Thor intervenes with Loki in tow, revealing that the incident with the Hulk was a ruse. While Loki threatens to unleash a massive amount of energy killing everybody in the vicinity, Using his control of ants, Hank Pym opens a trap door beneath Loki, causing him to fall into a chute, leading to a lead-lined container. Trapping him inside, the story comes to an end when Hank Pym makes the case that because each of them possess some kind of power, whether it be the intelligence of Stark, the physical power of Hulk, and the magic of Thor, they should band together and form a team for the purpose of safeguarding the Earth against dangerous threats. Now following its initial release, and in order to help build up popularity for the series, Marvel released the first six issues as a twice-monthly series. As a result, the Avengers themselves became incredibly popular among fans who now had assembled teams in both DC and Marvel Comics. In addition to this, with the Avengers Mansion established as her headquarters and the team financed by Tony Stark, one of the most memorable moments came in issue number 4 with the reintroduction of Captain America. Because his character had not been seen since the end of World War II and the cancellation of his original stories, in 1963 with Strange Tales issue number 163, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby had teased his reintroduction with a villain named the Acrobat dressing up as Steve Rogers. However, following the story, Marvel reached out to fans asking if interest was there for seeing Captain America return. Because the answer was a resounding yes, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby engineered his return within the pages of issue number 4. With Namor the Submariner discovering a colony of Inuits worshipping a figure in a block of ice, Namor intervened and attacked the group, causing the frozen block to fall into the water. Drifting through the ocean current, as the block of ice reached warmer climates, the ice melted, leaving the body of Steve Rogers in a state of suspended animation. With Iron Man and the Avengers stumbling upon the remains, the group brought the body on board, with Wasp declaring that this is actually Steve Rogers, the legendary Captain America. 
While the group examines Steve, he suddenly jerks awake with his last memories being the battle between Baron Zemo and the original Captain America comics, which resulted in the death of Bucky Barnes. Because the rest of the Avengers believes that this might be a trick by a villain looking to capitalize with their guard down, Captain America offers the opportunity for the Avengers to face him directly. Easily overpowering Ant-Man, Wasp brings the fight to an end, at which point the rest of the Avengers are satisfied that this is truly Captain America. In addition to this, because of its popularity combined with the boom that came with Marvel's initial introduction to Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, and the X-Men, the Avengers title was switched over to a monthly series with issue number 7. However, because the Avengers title was so popular, using a format similar to DC's Brave and the Bold, Marvel looked to use the series as a way to introduce new heroes which would otherwise have received very little exposure. To this end, in issue number 16, Stan Lee wrote a story titled The Old Order Changeth that saw all of the members of the Avengers resign from the team minus Captain America. Introducing Hawkeye who had only appeared previously in Tales of Suspense issues 57, 60, and 64, as well as Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver following their departure from the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants in the X-Men comics, by issue number 28, Stan Lee had brought both Ant-Man and the Wasp back to the title. Now by issue number 35 in 1966, Stan Lee had left the Avengers and was replaced by Roy Thomas who was writing the X-Men at the time. Under the Roy Thomas era which lasted until 1972 with issue number 104, the focus for the Avengers comics changed from a series focusing on one-shot battles to a continuity-centric line. Furthermore, because the original Galactus trilogy had opened the door for battles with space-faring enemies, Roy Thomas began the process of rolling the continuity and space battles over into a small-knit package to expand on the Avengers' popularity. With issues number 54 and 55, Roy Thomas introduced Ultron, a robot villain created by Hank Pym who would go on to become one of Earth's most formidable enemies. As a follow-up, in issue number 57, the Vision was introduced as a creation of Ultron who initially battled the Avengers but joined the team and helped to defeat Ultron and in issues number 88 and 89, Roy Thomas crossed the Avengers over with Gene Cullen's Captain Marvel with a story called the Kree Scroll War. As one of the most prolific events of the time, the Kree Scroll War is considered by many comic historians to be one of the most important stories written during the 1970s. Turning the universe into a kind of battlefield not unlike World War II, the conflict between the two previously established races as well as the Inhumans, the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, Carol Danvers, and Nick Fury served to expand on the Marvel cosmology as well as introduce a romance between the Scarlet Witch and the Vision. However, by 1972 with issue number 105, Steve Englehart had taken over the Avengers title after Roy Thomas had left Marvel for DC. During his time on the title lasting until issue number 151, Englehart's run maintained much of the same themes from Thomas's run including the revolving door of team members to boost unpopular names, as well as retconning or expanding on existing heroes. As an example, Englehart established that the Vision was actually a remodeled version of the original Human Torch from the 1940s named Jim Hammond. Using this as a platform by establishing that the Vision now had a true sense of identity, Englehart then orchestrated the long-awaited wedding between Scarlet Witch and the Vision, an act which will go on to spur a series between the two aptly titled Vision and the Scarlet Witch. While Englehart's time in the series is considered landmark by most readers, it wasn't until Jim Shooter's run with issue number 158, following a series of interim writers, that the Avengers developed some of the more modern classics. During his run, stories like Beware the Ant-Man covered in issue number 161 which focused on Hank Pym rebuilding Ultron under mind control and transporting Janet Van Dyne's memories into Jocasta, as well as the Korvac saga, introducing Michael Korvac from the 31st century allowing the original Guardians of the Galaxy to team up with the Avengers, all served to bolster the team and provide more comprehensive stories that expanded on their characters as well as their position within the pantheon of both Earth-based and universe-wide teams. In addition to this, Jim Shooter teamed up with George Perez, David Michelini, and Bob Layton for issue number 200. Considered to be one of the most controversial stories from Marvel Comics, issue number 200 saw Carol Danvers becoming pregnant by unknown means. While well, the story eventually saw this pregnancy was the result of a villain named Immortus impregnating Carol Danvers with a version of himself in order to be born into the mortal world and escape a life of loneliness outside of the time stream, many women consider this an affront and that from their perspectives, Carol Danvers was impregnated while under the manipulation of Immortus, something that some consider to be a form of rape. Furthermore, during his time on the series, Jim Shooter took particular interest in Hank Pym and his role as part of the Avengers. Because Hank Pym's solo series appeared within the pages of Tales to Astonish which ended in 1968 after it was turned into the Incredible Hulk Volume 2, the only exposure Hank Pym gained was within the pages of the Avengers. As a result, Shooter looked to expand on Pym as a person by incorporating his previous use of names like Goliath and Yellowjacket as a way to demonstrate an identity crisis. In Avengers issue number 212 titled Men of Deadly Pride, Hank Pym's view of himself reflected the view of fans in that he was constantly captured first and didn't really seem to add anything worthwhile to the team. 
As a result, the frustration over this perspective combined with his desire to find value led to the adoption of the Goliath and Yellow Jacket names in order to find his place within the team. With this self revile reaching a fever pitch, during an argument with Janet Van Dyne, Pym reached out and struck her across the face. As a result, the Avengers had called a meeting and effectively banished Hank Pym from the team and that his actions were perceived to be beyond acceptance. Furthermore, the relationship between Pym and Janet had come to a crashing halt, leading to a divorce between the two. However, because this undercurrent was forced to take a back seat to the ongoing threats facing the Earth, while it was a big moment for both characters, the situation fell to the wayside in the face of the massive conflicts faced by the team. And so as fallout from this incident, Jim Shooter departed the series with issue number 222, with issues 223 through 227 plotted by various writers, including J.M.D. Mateus and Steve Grant. While these stories were run of the mill in terms of the fact that they served to keep the stories going while Marvel searched for a consistent writer, with issue number 228, Roger Stern became the writer for the series. In his first story arc titled The Trial of Yellow Jacket, taking place in issues 228 through 230, Stern sought to follow up with the incident between Pym, Janet, and the Avengers as he believed the entire situation had been left hanging in the air without a resolution due to fan backlash. While the story saw the return of a villain named Egghead and his manipulation of Pym into sealing a quantity of adamantium, the resolution of the story in issue number 230 saw Hank Pym acknowledging the inferiority complex that he suffered from and the fact that his assault on Janet was a reflection of his anger rather than his willingness to deal with this problem. As a result, Pym reconciles with Janet and leaves the Avengers team in order to take some time for self-reflection. Following this, because the Avengers was such a successful title in its ability to maintain popularity with faces like Captain America, who raised the profiles of smaller heroes like Tigra, by 1984, Marvel expanded the Avengers title by introducing a West Coast variation of the team. However, where DC went all in with their variations of the Justice League following their continuity reboot with Crisis on Infinite Earths, Marvel was more cautious due to the fact that they could not pawn the new incarnation of the team on a reboot. Looking to Roger Stern due to his success with the main Avengers title, Marvel had him write this new version. With West Coast Avengers launching as a four-part issue limited series, Stern used the popularity of James Rhodes' War Machine to assist in boosting the popularity of the initial stories by having the group established by Hawkeye and including War Machine alongside Mockingbird, Wonder Man, and Tigra. Furthermore, with Hank Pym as a free-floating character following his departure from the Avengers proper, with the West Coast Avengers line coming under the control of Steve Englehart following the completion of the miniseries by Roger Stern, Englehart pulled Pym over to the West Coast Avengers team to serve as a manager of sorts until Marvel could figure out what to do with this character. Now regarding the main Avengers team itself, during Roger Stern's run, the series also saw characters like She-Hulk and Monica Rambeau join the group, as well as the introduction of Rogue in Avengers Annual Issue Number 10, which had been written by Chris Claremont. However, by 1989, with issue number 305 following his time at DC and the relaunch of Superman after the Crisis on Infinite Earths, Roger Stern had departed the Avengers title and was replaced by John Byrne, who inherited both the main Avengers title and West Coast Avengers. With sales of West Coast Avengers on the decline due to its roster largely composed of B-list characters, Byrne reinvigorated interest in the series by combining all of the Avengers into a single team, effectively shaking the roster up and splitting the group in half with equally popular characters on both sides. Furthermore, John Byrne launched the Vision Quest story arc within the pages of West Coast Avengers, which saw a retcon which resulted in the Vision dismantled and the truth revealed regarding his creation at the hands of Ultron, and that his mind was a copy of the mental patterns of Wonder Man. While the Vision was reassembled, as Fallout, his emotions were removed and the two children of himself and Scarlet Witch were revealed to be the Shards of Mephisto, a revelation that set the stage for the future story of Avengers Disassembled. However, in 1991 with issue number 343, Writer Bob Harris took over the Avengers title and alongside artist Steve Epting, crafted what many consider to be some of the best stories that forced the Avengers to question their own moral code. As an example, in 1992 with Avengers number 345, Bob Harris and Steve Epting launched a story titled Operation Galactic Storm. Centering on the Kree and the Shi'ar empires, the basis behind Galactic Storm saw the supreme intelligence, the religious and political leader of the Kree race, initiating a war with the Shi'ar empire for the purpose of goading them into wiping out most of the Kree in an effort to force their race out of evolutionary stagnation. As a result, the moral stance of the Avengers regarding their rule against killing was thrown out the window when the group decided to execute the supreme intelligence for what amounted to genocide. While Captain America stood against the decision, the act resulted in the temporary dissolution of the team, leading to Iron Man forming a short-lived branch-off team called Forceworks. Now going into 1993 with issue number 369, both Bob Harris and Steve Epting departed the series with Harris replaced by Glenn Hurdling with issue number 370. Taking a more technological approach due to the popularity of futuristic military characters like Cable and GW Bridge, 
The appearance of the Avengers reflected this, with Hank Pym appearing more like a military operative as opposed to his previous appearances. But furthermore, following the Onslaught saga, Marvel looked to reinvigorate interest in the series as it was lacking behind the X-Men related teams and popularity. This combined with the intention of outsourcing the Avengers, Captain America, Fantastic Four, and Iron Man comics for reasons that I can't find, led to Marvel killing these titles off at the end of the Onslaught story by having them sacrifice themselves in an effort to save all of reality, which then led to the teams effectively being resurrected by Franklin Richards in the Heroes Reborn universe. Under the artistry and writing of Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld, the purpose of the Heroes Reborn was to allow Avengers to operate outside of the main continuity, and the hope of Marvel was that the stories featured within this line would allow for a separate continuity with greater emphasis on the Avengers. However, where sales were initially popular, by the time the year-long endeavor had ended, it became apparent that the attempt was a failure, and in 1997, when the contract between Marvel, Jim Lee, and Rob Liefeld ended, all of the Heroes Reborn titles were returned to the mainstream Marvel continuity in a story titled Heroes Return. Now following the end of Heroes Return going into the 2000s, Kurt Busaic took over the series, launching Avengers Volume 3. Focusing more on viewing Heroes Reborn and Heroes Return as a soft reboot, the goal of Busaic was to provide a basis for incoming fans who were looking to get into the Avengers series. To this end, Busaic wrote a 12-issue story titled Avengers Forever, which centered on Rick Jones as he was being pursued by the villain Immortus and his servant Tempest. While in possession of the enigmatic Destiny Force, Rick Jones summons help from past, present, and future Avengers who work to help Rick defeat Immortus by battling throughout the time stream, including the Wild West and an alternate reality that saw the Avengers form in the 1950s. In addition to this, going into the 2000s proper, writer Jeff Johns enjoyed a brief run between Volume 3 issues 52 through 76, introducing heroes like Jack of Hearts and Scott Lang onto the Avengers team and killing off Jack of Hearts during the events of issues number 76 titled Full House. And so by 2005, with Joe Quesada taking over as editor-in-chief, because his goal was to return the Avengers titles to its origins as a team that served to introduce smaller heroes, as well as focus on character development rather than massive conflicts, under Brian Michael Bendis, Marvel launched the Avengers Disassembled event. Setting the stage for his larger vision, once the Avengers mansion was destroyed and Tony Stark was revealed to be unable to finance the team, the main Avengers title was cancelled and replaced by the new Avengers line. With the title under the control of Brian Michael Bendis, the initial six-part story arc called Breakout saw the group taking form after the villain Electro had been contracted to destroy the Raft, which was a prison near Rikers Island, New York, by a scroll disguised as the villain Electra. With multiple heroes coming together in an effort to corral the various villains back into the prison, the conclusion of the first story arc saw the team coming together in the form of Captain America, Spider-Woman, Wolverine, Iron Man, Spider-Man, and Luke Cage. In addition to this, between 2005 and 2010, the new Avengers title saw the same element of a rotating roster in that the events of Civil War saw pro-registration members staying on board alongside Iron Man and anti-registration members leaving to join Captain America's Secret Avengers. Furthermore, by 2007 and 2008, Marvel launched two other teams titled The Mighty Avengers and The Dark Avengers, both of which existed as fallout from Civil War. Because the 50-state initiative served to provide a superhero team in each state, the Mighty Avengers were introduced as a government-sanctioned Avengers team led by Carol Danvers and consisting of Ares, Black Widow, Iron Man, The Century, Wasp, and Wonder Woman. However, after the year-long Secret Evasion event, which saw the planet Earth infiltrated by scrolls in an attempt to take over, because Tony Stark was unable to foresee the invasion and because this discovery came with the realization that around 90% of the Earth's population had been replaced, he was criticized for his inability to stop the attack, especially due to his promise of leadership and protection of the Earth during Civil War. As a result, Tony Stark was replaced by Norman Osborn, who disbanded S.H.I.E.L.D., the 50 State Initiative, and the Thunderbolts Initiative, a program which saw various villains serving as a team. Reforming all three, S.H.I.E.L.D. became Hammer, and the Thunderbolts were reorganized into a Black Ops team. Because most of the original Mighty Avengers had resigned after the ousting of Tony Stark, Osborn brought in former Thunderbolts members Bullseye, Moonstone, and Venom, who were disguised as Hawkeye, Carol Danvers, and Spider-Man respectively, in addition to former Mighty Avengers members Ares and the Sentry staying on board. However, after the conclusion of the events of Dark Reign and the Siege, it was revealed that Norman Osborn had launched an attack against Asgard, and as a result, he was imprisoned and removed from his role as leader, Hammer was dissolved, and the Dark Avengers were disbanded. During this time, Marvel was also launching an event called the Heroic Age, which served to rebrand the various series and serve as a throwback to the early days of Marvel Comics, with less of an emphasis on darker stories like Siege, and instead focus on more light-hearted stories. As part of the Heroic Age, the new Avengers, Dark Avengers, Mighty Avengers, and Avengers Initiative titles were cancelled, and the original Avengers title made its return with Avengers issue number 1, 
which saw Captain America, Hawkeye, Spider-Woman, Wolverine, Spider-Man, Thor, and Iron Man coming together again. Furthermore, in May and June of the same year, Marvel launched Secret Avengers, New Avengers Volume 2, and Avengers Academy. While the Heroic Age as it pertained to the Avengers was only designed to be temporary, with Marvel launching an actual Heroic Age event, by issue number 5, the Avengers remained under the control of Bendis, but reverted back to the status quo of tying into Marvel's consistent run of events. As a result, going into fear itself in 2011, which focused on expanding the Asgardian mythos by presenting a serpent and his seven worthy generals who sought to take the throne of Asgard from Odin, the Avengers titles were tied in and shaken up by way of a story called Shattered Heroes, which saw Daisy Johnson and Storm join the team, with Spider-Man and Wolverine leaving to join Luke Cage's new Avengers. From here, the title experienced further shakeups under the writing of Bendis. During the Avengers vs. X-Men story from 2012, Storm had left the team to side with the X-Men during the search for Hope Summers, and once Avengers vs. X-Men ended, Marvel launched the Uncanny Avengers as part of the Marvel Now line, which served to incorporate members of both the Avengers and the X-Men proper, with a roster composed of Captain America, Havoc, Rogue, the Scarlet Witch, Thor, and Wolverine. While this standard of shaking up the team in favor of more fan-appealing lineups continued for the next couple of years with events like Axis, Going into time runs out in Secret Wars under Jonathan Hickman, both the Avengers titles and new Avengers titles were relaunched as Volume 5 and Volume 3 respectively in an effort to tell the story of what led to the end of the multiverse and its recreation during all new, all different Marvel. With that being said, we're going to bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.